original owners of this firm was uh, Huey and Mary McCarran, and the house probably is approximately 150 years old. So they had to clear the land and build this house from scratch, which they did, and farmed the land for many years. This is the house my mother was brought up in, and it was always used as a farmland, and they had both dairy and sheep and a variety of animals. As um, I grew and left and then came back, we started farming here again as the fourth generation in 1996 approximately, and that's when the alpaca farm was originated. And, um, and to this day, that's what we're doing. Barry Eisenhower, a windswept firm. We chose that name because there's always a constant wind up here, and we're up, we're up so high, so it, it just seemed to be a fitting name. I guess like any business, everybody has their role in, in the firm, so some people may be more active in the physical part of it, other pe people may be more active in the planning of what goes on on the firm, from you know, cleaning the stalls, defeating the animals. Everybody has a role. Ruby, get out of our guard. It's almost like raising a family. Uh, your, your animals come first, your children come first. Every one of our babies, hopefully genetically, is improving their fiber quality. Uh, what's their future? Well, they have a life expectancy of up to 25 years. Uh, so majority of our animals are kept here and uh, raised for fiber. So those are the shears. So what happens is we, we actually stretch them out right here on this mat. And then we'll, we tie their front feet and back feet. And then, then we start and shear, sort of you're shearing the belly. So you're shearing and folding it back like this. As you're shearing, you're folding the fiber back. This is called a tumbler, and what happens here, after we shear the animals, we put the, the fleece uh, the, into the tumbler, and we turn it on for probably an average of 10 to 15 minutes, and that gets rid of if they have any dust or any large debris, it'll shake it out, and it'll fluff it up. And once we finish with that, then we take it and we'll put it on the sorting table. Once it's tumbled out and we got the majority of the dust and the big debris out in the vegetation, we, we sort it out in the table and we pick out the rest. And that's sticks and twigs that will, are stuck in the fiber that probably wouldn't fall out when it's being tumbled. And we do that to clean it to the best that we can. And then we sort it out to a specific length for different projects. So you take um, a piece of fiber like this. And you can see it's sort of got crimp in it. And then we look at the length and we sort of sort them out and package them so that the when they go to the mill, they're all sort of the same length. So when it's spinning, it's easier for it to be spun together. This is a hakaya. And you can see there's a lot more crimp and sort of body to the fiber. Whereas the suri has very little crimp but it's very, late, uh, very silky and um, has, lim has limited body. So that's why when we make our yarn, we blend the two of them together. And that's basically what this is. And after we do all that, we bag it and get it ready for the meal. Lays in the Attic started when I was 19 and um, I had to do a summer job and I opened it the first time in the basement of our house. It was just a chance for me, it was, you know, just to kind of get the feels of entrepreneurship. The name came out of just kind of tossing around fun things and we were dealing with wool and woolies and um, we kind of live in an old house, so we thought in the attic would be kind of a funny thing. So it just kind of came around a family conversation we had at dinner one time, and that's just how it sort of was born. 
what we have in the store, we have a variety. Uh, we started with our uh, mainly socks and scarves were the first two we started. We branched off into shawls and duvets and now we do dryer balls and we even have some yarn. And we have mittens and insoles and so we're every year we try to try something new. We just uh, tried some uh, felt-up mats this year and we're using color which is new for us. Once we understood the fiber and things like that, it was now to move it to a finished product and have the people, uh, like our client base, understand uh, the beauty of the product. If you have a poor quality starting, you're going to have a, an end, a poor quality product at the end. So we feel the difference is we're actually managing that quality from the beginning to the end. I think people are uh, really surprised at the variety of products that we have made from the uh, different uh, from the alpacas, and I think the color has been a huge addition to what we're trying to uh, portray in our product line. And uh, I think people really, yeah, it's the quality of the product that stands out, um, and the and the fabric and the luxuriousness of the alpaca fiber. Our next big step is to sell our product, open it up to the world online. In five years, our goal is actually to be Make our own manufacture something of our own. And what I mean by that is all of this stuff is our own, but something that can be made on our farm that we don't have to ship it out. One of Isabella's uh, goals is to make sure that she, that you know, no one product is good. So if you see someone with a shawl, it, it's, you're not going to see somebody else with that same shawl. It may be a different color, different pattern, different texture, but no one product is going to be alike. And I don't think any big box store can, can say that. Alpacas seem to be majestic and kind and timid little creatures, so I think everybody makes a connection. The biggest thing my family, Barry and I and the girls take out of this is that it was um, a labor of love. It's kind of a legacy for everyone and for the future generations to come. Mm -hmm.